Today, we got the rare sci-fi book on my channel, Aurora Rising by Amy Kafum Kaufman and J. Kristoff himself. And well, let's get right on to it. So, pretty much, I'll give you a basic summary. It is a classic space setting, kind of like Star Wars. And basically, um, humans, they've gone to space and we've met al aliens. And it's been around 200 years through two, 300 years since we've left Earth and formed a government, inter in interspace government, and basically met with other aliens. And there's two species of aliens that we kind of talk with, and that mainly we talk with is the Betrascans and the... Sorry, but the Slidrathi. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a cool name, I, I just... I'm bad with pronunciation, okay, just leave me alone. And basically, it's about how how the Aurora Legion, okay? The Aurora Legion is basically what the UN does, except it isn't as useless as the UN. In fact, it actually does things like, you know, solve peacekeeping problems and border problems. And the Aurora Legion is basically just, a, there's a lot of squads in the Aurora Legion, and there's hundreds and hundreds of squads, and all of these squads go around in space and help people and do missions, okay? And the uh, and Tyler Jones is one is like a golden boy of pretty much the school that makes these oral legionnaires and members. And he's the golden boy. He's an alpha, which means that he's destined to become one of the squad leaders. And he's he's the highest scorer, so he in the draft, which is when the alpha gets to pick their team members, he can get the top pick pretty much of the top graders and he's very very happy and he's a model student. However, when he takes his spaceship out for a drive for fun, he finds an abandoned ship where Aurora is waiting. Basically, Aurora, she goes to... Uh, the book kind of starts, actually, with him trying to rescue Aurora and almost dying in the process. And Aurora is a regular special girl. She's been in cyrostasis for 200 years, since pretty much when Earth first started to go into space. And because of Tyler, because Tyler, because of the fact that Tyler had to go and rescue Aurora, he lost a lot of time, and he didn't manage to do the draft, which means that he didn't get to pick the best members. So, in other words, his entire life got ruined. He stuck with the scrappy, dumb, bad squad, who individually are supposed to be really good at their jobs, but are terrible for teamwork. Cal is an alien. And he's a Silthrathi, and he is the best tank, or is a tank. In, and in Aurora terms, Aurora Legion terms, we means, a tank means uh, the fighter, basically. They, they mow through enemies, and they're super strong, and they're supposed to be uh, good at any kind of environment. So even, even if it's zero grav fighting, they're good at it. They're supposed to be good at every single weapon in the world, and they're really, really strong. And he's a Silthrathi. And then we got the Aurora Legion's best face and ace, Scarlet and Cat. Who I'm gonna call Scar and Cat because that's that's their nicknames. And basically, they are uh, Tyler's old friends. Scarlet is Tyler's sister, and Cat is a childhood friend. And these two girls have stuck with Tyler, even though Tyler missed the drafting because you know they they're, they're friends and brother sister, so they got that synergy, you know. And they got a bunch of oddities. Like I said, the weird, a weird, almost psychotic tanker, a warhead tanker, who a uh, Slidrathi tanker, uh, named, uh, named like I said, Cal. And basically, Slidrathi. There's a lot of factions, and there's a faction in Slidrathi that made a revolution. So it's kind of, it's kind of like the Taliban was in Afghanistan. It's like, it's like, yeah, all Afghanistans are fine, but there is a tiny little group that wants to kill everyone. And rebels against everyone, which is which is basically the what the war 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 group kind of is. And he has like he's that tribe. He's the tribe that betrayed them. However, he's now in the Aurora Legion because he's he's not with them. Therefore, everyone hates him, and he hates everyone as well. And we got him as a tank, which is great. That's that's great. And we got Finian, who is a gearhead, which means he's like the tech supporter, and he's a Betraskan. And well. He got a disease when he was very young, so now he's in a, in a suit, in an exoskeleton suit. And he can't move, 
properly without his suit, which which really, really, really sucks. And finally, we got Zilo, who is pretty much a sociopath, who is the brain of the group, which means that she is the science officer and also the medical officer of the group. And she's very, very smart, like crazy, crazy smart. However, she's a bit of a sociopath. And if you're wondering, that's what they look like. This is Alpha, the, this is the Alpha Tyler, the perfect golden boy model student. This is the face Scarlet. By the way, the face is like a diplomatic officer. And then we got the Ace, who is Cat, and who is supposed to be able to drive every single kind of spaceship in the galaxy. And we got the Brainzilla, like I told you, the gearhead Finn, who got the exoskeleton. If you zoom in closer, you see the supporters. And we got the tank cow. As you can see, you can tell he hates you. And that's the that's the sign of the tribe. And that's the sign of the tribe that I was talking to you about. And and that's Aurora, who is the mystery girl that um that got rescued, in, who is also coincidentally on the front page. And basically, Aurora starts getting visions. And the the leader, the leader of the Aurora Legion basically makes her stow away into the weird, really bad crew that I just showed you. And half of them are really incorporated with each other's kind of uh, spaceship. And basically, they want to get her away from the Terran government or something. And this really simple mission of giving medical supplies to refugees turned into a law-breaking, life-threatening situation where the rural, where the legioneers, where the really weird ragtag groups needs to survive and find out why Aurora got stolen away by having faith. Yep, that's pretty much the entire book, in a nutshell. And the rest of the book is really grid, really nice, suspensey plot twists and plot lines where Aurora needs to find what happened in the past to Octavia 3, which is the, the colony that she was bound to before her ship got weirded away into the void. And they want to find out what's going on, they want to save everyone, They need to, and they're finding out that there's perhaps a little bit more to this situation than meets the eye, which creates a really nice feeling of suspense. And that's the rest of the book. I'm not going to explain the rest of the plot, because that will take me 40 minutes. And the analysis. Now, not and the really fun thing about this book is that not one specific main character is the main character. Usually in a lot of books, we got one or two main characters, then we got the side characters. And the side characters are, and we got the side characters, then we got like the side side characters that are less important than the side characters. So it's kind of like the story of the main character and the side characters. However, in this story, it's about, it's about this entire squad are main characters. They're all main characters, which is really, really fun. And it's executed extremely well, which is the reason... And the last time I found something, found an author executing all these characters and making a solid base for them and creating great, like, character development for them for all of these characters at the same time, the last time I saw that was probably in... The Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. It was the juggling between the seven heroes. And it's done really, really well, which I really, really appreciate on that often. And also, the actual uh, starting part, it's kind of like there's an inside joke for me. Because basically, Tyler is about to die while saving Aurora. And he says, wait, 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 wait. Let's turn the clock back a couple hours. Because, like, I know I'm supposed to start the story as an exciting bit, but... I'm all, I'm about to die, and you should probably care about me about to die, and being dying will totally suck. So so you can care about me actually dying. Let's let's go back to tell you guys who I am, and that's kind of like an inside joke for me because every time I kill off a character, we maximize the impact. As an author, we maximize the impact of how bad it's gonna be by making everyone like the character a lot. That that's what we do as authors. We we make you feel pain. We maximize pain if we give you pain, and when there's happiness, we try to maximize the happiness. Simple stuff. And that's done, and he kind of outright said, oh, I need to start the book in an exciting moment, but you guys need to care about the character before you guys can feel any kind of suspense or threat. So here we go. <laughs> and that's kind of like an inside joke for me that wouldn't probably resonate with a lot of people that I just kind of want to point out. 
and each character really I already kind of kind of mentioned this but all the characters feel really really embodied and all of their uh, character development and all of their like the way they speak their mannerisms that kind of stuff is perfectly made super duper well at the start of the book so that we know what kind of characters there are for the rest of the books and we actually care about the characters which Honestly, it's, it's, it's a very genius way of doing that, and, she, and the authors are very, very, very good at that. And the world building was expansive, it was massive, but it wasn't, it wasn't super duper hard to, it was a lot, but it wasn't enough to like make my brain triple and die. And it was kind of like, almost felt like me reading the uh, Lord of the Rings series again, because that's the kind of expansive world building that I kind of got from Oral Rising. It was an awesome read. I would give it an easy rating of 9.5 out of 10. I would give 10 out of 10, but there's some some series of like that one and and, and that one that you, you it, that's very hard to overcome, <laughs> which is why I'm not giving the full 10 score. But 9.5, it means that I would like throttle you to make you read it. It is very, very good. And like always, your plot twister and the plot twister have a great day. Like I said, come on, don't you want to see these guys fight evil people and go around in space and do risky adventures? Like, hello? I, I think anyone would enjoy that, honestly. Have a great day. Highly recommended.